Hi everyone, in this video I'll be discussing a Python program I made called Media Geotag Mapper, which converts geotags from photo and video files into points that can be plotted on a map. The program also lets you draw paths in between these points to give you a better sense of where you've traveled over the years. The program is open source, so I hope you'll be able to use it to create your own versions of these maps. I'll start by showing the maps themselves, and then I'll provide uh, more detail about how the program works. So this is a map showing just about all of my geotags uh, in the U.S. from 2012 to 2022. This map is uh, in, in HTML format, so it's actually interactive. I can uh, pan it out. Um, it's running a little slow because I'm also using OBS to record the map. And so uh, if I did have OBS recording, it would be a little bit more responsive, but it, it's a large map with a, about 20,000 plus points, so it does take a while. Uh, the program also makes static versions of these maps, but the nice thing about the HTML maps is that I can zoom in and just get more details. So uh, I went to uh, Middlebury College for my undergrad, so this image just kind of lets you see where I wandered around. And then if I click on them, I can see where I have these stored, so then I could go and look up the picture. Uh, the program also created maps for me for each year that I had geotags. So for instance, if I look up 2012, um, you can see I, at the time, was spending most of my time in Vermont for college and then some time in the D.C. area as well, uh, where I grew up. Uh, 2013, I did a lot more travel. Uh, so after graduating college, I had the chance to actually go to East Asia uh, for, for a trip. I spent time um, in Tokyo, so seeing Roppongi and the Imperial Palace. Uh, that, was, that was a cool trip. Then we went over to, um, zooming out here, uh, flew to Seoul, but to connect to, to Taiwan. I'm um, really enjoying my time in Taiwan. It's a beautiful country. Uh, so I spent most time in Taipei here. And so again, you can kind of see based on this map where we travel to. Uh, I think this is like a little park. I'll go through the rest of these maps a little more quickly. Uh, 2014 uh, was mostly in Chicago. Uh, where I was living there, uh, but also spent some time visiting LA and uh, Colorado as well and New Mexico. So then for uh, between 2015 and 2022, um, for work and for school, I moved to Houston, and then to Austin, and then to Evansville in Indiana, uh, and then ultimately over to New York. And you can kind of see that in these different maps. And in 2022, uh, this year for the final semester of my MBA, I had a chance to go visit Israel. Um, so I really enjoyed visits to Tel Aviv. Um, we also had a chance to go visit Jerusalem. Um, so you can see here, uh, the map does a pretty good job showing my walks around the old city, uh, which I visited um, a couple times because it was just such an amazing place to see. So spent a lot of time there. And you so this program works by extracting geotag information from photo and video files. So what do I mean by geotag information? Well, let's take a look at this picture. Uh, this is from uh, a visit to Miami from earlier this year. So if we right click and take a look at the properties here, under details, we can see that in addition to information about the file size and the resolution, we actually see the geographic coordinates. We have the latitude as about 25 north and the longitude as about 80 west. And of course, uh, it's a little more specific than that. But this is information that then we can extract using Python and plot on a map also uh, using Python. In addition, we can see, we can also plot the path that I took between, say, this picture uh, and this one, which was probably a very small path uh, because these were both taken pretty soon after another, but for longer distances, you can really see how those paths take. So I'll give a brief overview here of the Python program that creates these maps. Um, there's a lot more information on GitHub and within the commentary, so I'll try to skim over this in pretty brief. Um, but the program starts by, of course, important functions. It then goes through a list of folders from which you would want to extract the pictures. So you can see here, I'll be extracting images and videos from uh, my old Sony camcorder, a series of Samsung Galaxy phones from the S4 Mini to the S21, um, and also extracting videos from those Samsung phones too. Um, the program should work on iPhones. I tested it with some iPhone images as well uh, from a friend. Um, but it might be a matter of updating the uh, functions, which you see over on the right side here, to uh, make sure that you're getting the right EXIF and metadata tags and pulling the geotags out from there. So, so uh, after getting those um, folders, it's going to create uh, lists of all of the file names. Then after that, it's going to go through each of those files, each of those pictures and video clips and extract the geotag data. And this can take a little while. You can see this block, I think took about, about 28 minutes to 38 minutes to run. Uh, simply because for me, there were about 8,000 videos and 26,000 
images that it was extracting data from. So the program creates both a list of those media files and then also a list of um, files with their location uh, data included as well. So here you have the latitude, the longitude, um, along with the date that it was modified, which for Samsung devices tended to be a pretty good measure of when the image was originally taken. The Media Geotag Mapper program also creates a CSV file containing information about the files along with their geographic coordinates, and then this is the data that will then be used to create the maps. So then the program uses this list of locations to create maps. Uh, when you're making the maps, if you want to add routes in between the points, it's really important to have the clips and images sorted by the date they were taken. Otherwise, your routes are going to not make any sense. They won't really be an accurate representation of where you're traveling. So taking this list, you can make uh, maps that don't have those routes added, which you know still produces some interesting images, such as this one. But I find it to be a lot more soon to add in the roots if you're able to get it. So uh, I had to modify my list a little bit to get the roots to appear correctly. But once I did, it was kind of cool to go through and see where where I'd been. Um, so, and then the rest of the program just shows the same maps that, that I showed early in the video. Um, these are static images, um, which are a little easier to share and sometimes have a smaller file size. So create static images and it can give you kind of a sense of how far you've traveled each year. Uh, using another library to calculate kind of great circle distance. So you can see what those distance estimates look like each year. They might be overestimates, but it's still interesting to look at. The core of the program is really uh, these functions over on the right side. These functions uh, include ones for creating lists of media, for getting locations, both for picture locations and for clip locations. And so for instance, in order to retrieve picture locations, the function is going to go through uh, each row in a table containing files, and it's going to use the EXIF library to open up that image file and then extract things like the GPS latitude and the GPS longitude from that file. And then it will, in this case, convert the um, degrees, minutes, seconds variant of that geographic data into decimal degrees, which will make it easier to plot those on the map. And then it adds those back to the list. And if it can't find any, which happens in many cases, it will just um, add uh, a zero, and then those can be excluded. There's a simple one for clips. It's a little different because that uses a different library for extracting that information. Um, and then you have functions for creating those lists of locations and then for mapping them. The mapping code's a bit more complex because there are a lot of different ways you can create the map, so I want to add in some different functions there. It's different functions for creating screenshots of the maps and then smaller versions of the screenshots also. Uh, and then finally, there's a function for calculating the distance or estimating the distance you've traveled each year. So I had a lot of fun working on this project. I really hope that you'll be able to use these functions to create your own versions of these maps. Uh, it'll probably bring back good memories of places you've been and places you've traveled. And um, if you have any questions, uh, just let me know, um, either uh, in, this, in the comments on this video or on the project's GitHub page. Um, we'd be happy to help with those.